We're going to all get ready there. In the Old Testament, we're going to read from today. And today is the third. Uh, yes, third, isn't it? Yeah, third of the third. 2013, yeah. Third, yes, that's right. And um, Sunday, Church Meet at Jesus the Christ Ministries Mission. And first of all today, I want to uh, make mention of what's going on on the news. They were talking about Clive Palmer, a uh, multi-million, multi-billionaire or whatever, very rich man in Australia, uh, a would-be if he could be politician. And Clive is looking at rebuilding uh, the Titanic. And uh, at the small price of $200 million. I don't know whether that's Australian or US with one million dollars for a first class ticket supposedly and uh the funny part about it was he said it will be it will have a a made in china sticker on it so it will be made in china i mean could you get any worse i mean the titanic was enough wasn't it but made in china uh, just think about it, a Titanic that is made in China. Scary, as sister said, scary, hey? Scary indeed. And we're going to look at boats today because it's a, it's like a boaty weather, isn't it? Rain, rain, rain. It's a bit like the days of Noah. So we're going to have a look at boats today. Before we go there, let's go to James 3. I wrote the scripture down, I can't remember why, but the Holy Ghost certainly knows, because he obviously put it on my heart to write it down. So we go over to James, James chapter 3 and verse 16. Yeah. Yeah. In my old Bible, it's a, it's a bit hard to read. A bit hard to read, but uh, I'm pretty sure it reads here with the dog ears. For where envy and strife, self-seeking exist. Would you, do we see that? Yes. Confusion and every evil thing will be there. But the wisdom that is from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, plenty of good fruit, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So... We have a lot of this today, envy, strife, self-seeking. These are, you know, all brought on by self, as it says, self-seeking. And envy comes along. Envy, strife, confusion, every evil thing, every evil thing. It's the wisdom of the God of this world. And that's what he teaches. He teaches, he, 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 one of his main doctrines is self-seeking. That you're going to make yourself someone. You're going to, Brother Shadrach, you're going to make yourself someone. The devil doesn't want you to look to the Lord to find out who you are. He wants you to be content with stuck, bogged down in the mud of sin and tradition, culture. There's only one culture with a Christian and a disciple of Jesus, that's holiness. 
That's our culture. A culture is a way of living. I found a new way of living. I found a new life divine. I have the fruit of the Spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in the vine. I have prosperity, power, and victory. Abiding, abiding in the vine. I found a new way of living. Hey, I'm abiding in the vine. I'm living there. We're living there. We don't visit the vine, we abide. If you visit the vine, if you visit Jesus, if you call on him now and then, you're not going to be happy. You must trust him and obey. It's like the, the lying analogy, the lying analogy that the devil has given to the Pentecostals and the Evangelicals and the Roman Catholics of the world, the lying analogy of, well, you have Mr. Brown and he has a son named John Brown. And no matter how long you live or no matter what you do, you can never be anything else but the son of Mr. Brown. You can't change that. That's their example and excuse. That's their so-called theory and theology and teaching that you can't lose, you can't forfeit your salvation. Because once you're born again, you are a child of God and that can never change. But the reality is, and the truth is, I am... As of the day I was born again, I, I was not a Sheehan. My name is Paul Sheehan. Paul Marshall John Sheehan. But the moment I was born again, I had a new name given to me. The scriptures say in the book of Revelation, he's written your name and mine on a white stone. And only he and you will know that name. You have a new name. Hey? When we're born of the Spirit, it's a whole fresh new start. Fresh. Born again. Of a new family. We're of the family of God. All the trash and rubbish and sin and the sin of the forefathers resting upon the second and third generation, and they still drag that into the Pentecostal churches today, saying you're under the sway of all that garbage. You need the demons cast out, generational demons. No, you just need to be born again from above. And then you are in you, brand new, plastic on the doors, brand new. Person, totally brand new. You make me feel brand new, Jesus. Hey, right? brand new to be able, capable by the power of the Holy Ghost, able to be the servant of the Lord. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free to be the servant of my Lord. I'm free. I have a liberty now to choose whether I want to be servant for how long for and if at all. How long do you want to be the servant of the Lord? Until things get rough? And then the thorns of this world and life overtake? Hey. Eh? Brother Shadrach, can you turn that? Yes, just give us a couple of more on that uh, air con, please. It's very boaty weather, isn't it? About 21 degrees uh, we have out there today or something like that. Lots of rain hasn't stopped, just rain and rain and rain. 
And while it's raining, the sovereign Lord's raining in me. Hey? And you. And when Jesus is reigning in you and, and, and leading and lording, it doesn't matter if it's overcast for the rest of your life because there's sunshine, sunshine in my soul today, isn't there? Jesus came and stayed. So demonic wisdom, always self is in that. It's always self, isn't it? It's always self in the demonic wisdom. But in the godly wisdom, it's selfless. God teaches us through his wisdom the safest and the greatest place to be is in the selfless pilgrim position. Putting others first. Just like Father put his son out for us. Showed his love and gave his only begotten. Hey? So I just thought I'd read those scriptures. But the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And the fruit of the wisdom that comes from above, there's a gentleness there and a willingness to yield, not a headstrong Rebellious attitude, but a willingness to yield. Filled with mercy, good fruits. Without partiality to your family, relatives or anyone else. Without hypocrisy, amen. So, let's go on to the message today in Genesis. We're only going to read a few verses in Genesis chapter 7. Genesis means beginning. Genesis chapter 7. Sunshine, sunshine in my soul today. Jesus came and stayed. Third of the third, 2013, Jesus Christ Ministries Mission Sunday meme. Genesis 7, 1. Then the Lord said to Noah, come into the ark, you and all your household. Because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and female. To each of animals that are unclean. A male and his female. Also seven each of birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of all the earth. For after seven more days I will cause it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy the face of the earth, all the living things that I have made. And Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him. God does destroy. God does create. God is the creator. Jesus the Christ is God. Our primary verse is Genesis 7.1. Hey? Genesis 7.1. Then the Lord said to Noah, come into the boat. You and all your house are because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Are we righteous before him or are we just righteous before people? Are we righteous before him? God can see. We know Pentecostal blab, evangelical blab, oh, God just looks down and sees the blood of Jesus. All is sweet. Now, he sees you. He sees me. He knows how many hairs in your head. He knows what you think before you think it. He knows everything. 
He's omniscient. Title of our message today is All are on a boat. Every one of us are on a boat in the world. Every one of us are on a boat going somewhere. Every one of us are sailing either to hell or heaven. And when you're sailing on a boat, if you've ever been on a boat, it's smooth, isn't it, going? Like, it's different to riding in the car. It's different to riding on a tractor. Or a push bike or a motorcycle bumping up and down. Although the seas can get rough. But, Every one of us are on a boat and in a boat going to either hell or heaven. And God, he looks down and he's looking at your heart and my heart. And that's the question that the Spirit put in my heart to minister today. Does God see that you are righteous before him in his eyes in this time? So what is the boat you're on? What is it called? Where is it going? What might it, the boat you're on meet with on the seas of life? And what is the boat like? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Mr. Palmer, the multimillionaire, Mr. Money, he's rebuilding, doing a replicate Titanic made in China. So it's bound to sink sooner than the Titanic. It's bound to sink, isn't it? Every time I look at the, the Noah's boat, the Noah's Ark, I always think of the gospel. The, I think of the gospel ship. Because the New Testament and the doctrine of the Christ is like a New Testament Ark. Are we in or are we out? We can't be faltering. We can't be coming in and going and coming in. (laughs) The Lord said to Noah, come in. That's it. And then there was going to be a rumble in the jungle. So what is your, what is your, your boat called? I know my boat is called the gospel ship. I highly exalt the gospel ship. When my wife first met me, prior to meeting me, she had a dream that there was a ship coming to where she lived. There was a ship coming. But she didn't know. It was only me. Because no ship can go on dirt. And that's where I met her. Hi. Hey? She was getting a, a, a type of or an analogy of the gospel ship. She was getting and understanding that there was going to be a rescue episode happening. (laughs) God loves rescuing the perishing. He loves it. But there's many out there and and they're looking for the titanics to ride the titanics of the world. They're looking for the love boats 
the love balls. Yes, it is taking another run, the love ball. Just a big cesspool for everyone. The love boat. There's about as much love on board as there is gold bars in this fellowship. <laughs> they should call the lust boat. Yes, it's making another run. The lust boat. It might be like that P&O cruiser recently that fell to pieces at sea. I'm not sure if it was a P&O, but it was, it was one of those cruise ships. People save all their lives to go on that cruise. And what happened? Something went wrong with the water and it all shut down and you couldn't use the dunny. That's Australian for ablution or toilet. Dunny. They couldn't, and it was just piling up. People were, were stacking it into black garbage bags and putting it outside the door. And I reckon the stench became so bad on the ship, people were diving overboard. <laughs> they were abandoning ship. I won't say that. I was going to say something, but the Lord restrained me. <laughs> Woo! Sunshine, sunshine in my soul today. And the stage became unbearable. But look at, look at our choices. It reminds me of me before I met the Saviour. My choices were all just mudslides. <laughs> As a man said to me the other day, he said, what do you think of all this rain up north and all these people? Tragic, isn't it? Losing their homes for the fourth time. Cleaning up after the sixth time. It's tragic. I said, it is. I said, you wouldn't think people were so hard to learn, would you? You wouldn't, wouldn't credit it. How many times you've got to tell people to repent. And this guy just looked at me. He said, well, you may be right. I said, no, 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 I am right. I am right. It's time to repent. The Lord said to Noah, get into the boat. You and all those who have chosen to be of your household. I have seen with my own eyes that you are a righteous man. Amen. That's what we should be looking for, is God's, God's acceptance. Not man's acceptance. Not woman's acceptance. Not society's acceptance, but God's acceptance. And when you have a witness of that, it will be sunshine, sunshine in your soul today. So, what is your boat called? Are you aiming and esteeming to a love boat and a P&O cruise or a, a Titanic? experience we always have a titanic experience it's huge when we rebel it's always a sinking ship isn't it every ship sinks it all turns to mud everything is swamped and washed away and blown away We're always putting our money into pockets, Brother Clifford, with holes in them when we're not 
contributing to the Lord's work. But when we get on board the gospel ship, oh, hallelujah. I, when we get on board the gospel ship, everything changes. Everything. It's a whole new way of living, new life divine. A totally whole new way of thinking, behaving, brand new. Let's turn in our Bibles to Matthew 24, please. Tell of a message today. All are on a boat. Everyone's on a boat. What boat are you on? Matthew 24:36. But of that day and hour, no one knows. No, not even the angels of heaven, but only Father. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man, the Christ Jesus, be. Matthew 24, 38. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving and married until the day that Noah entered the boat. And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Two men will be in a field and one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. What? Therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this for sure, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready for the Son of Man, Jesus the Christ, is coming at an hour when you do not expect him. We have to be ever ready. We have to be ready to die. This very day, waiting for the Master Jesus Christ to come to take us away, rather than be taken away and swept away by the world into a fantasy land and an illusion and lies. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4 says, For after seven days I will cause it to rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and I will destroy from the face of the earth all the living things that I have made. Come on now. Hey? Eh? He said, come on in to the boat, because after seven more days, Brother Clifford, after seven more days, then the water's going to be turned on. You're listening today. Hey? This reminds me of the upward call, the rapture, so to speak. We know the word rapture is not in the Bible. The upward call and the catching away. It always reminds me. Of the catching away. The Lord taking his bride. I do believe in that. I believe in the pre-tribulation upward call. I, I believe that. And I teach that. I teach that the unsaved and the disobedient saints will be left behind. For great tribulation. That the world has never seen. What boat are we on? Are we on the gospel ship? 
Have we come in to the doctrine and are we staying there and that's our plan to stay there? What's your boat called? Is it a love boat? Is it a Titanic? A P&O that becomes full of excrement? There's only one ship where you can rejoice and have a Holy Ghost assurance of everything and every time and all time. And that's the gospel ship. Be ready. Where is your is your boat going? Where is your ship going? Where is it heading? Is it around the world tour? Is it is it going around in circles? Where is it going? Is it going to certain ports? Or is it going to glory? Let's go to the writings of Hebrews, Paul to Hebrews. Hebrews, into so, the so-called faith chapter. Hebrews 11. Hallelujah. Sunshine, sunshine in my soul today. What boat are we on? There's no room for backsliding. Hebrews 11, verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. He's preparing a city for them. Verse 15 Hebrews 11, and truly if they had called to mind, and they'd have gone back and reminisced that country from which they had come out, they would have had plenty of opportunity to go back, wouldn't they? But we go on. We don't go back. We don't go back reminiscing, walking in the park and reminiscing. We don't go back reminiscing our traditions in Pentecostalism and Evangelicalism, Seventh-day Adventistism and Jehovah Witnessism, Mormonism. We don't go back. We just go forward telling people don't go there. We tell people to get on the gospel ship. Amen? We tell them to get on the gospel ship. Time is fleeting. Everything around us is crumbling. We need to get out there during the week in our workplace. We need to tell people, you better get on that gospel ship. The Lord's going to shut the door. It's not going to happen as you want it to happen. We don't know the day he will return. No one knows. We must be ready. Does that sound like one saved always saved? Does that sound like you can't lose forward slash forfeit your salvation? You must be ready. You must be watching. Well, what if you're not watching? You know, when you're watching something, you have an interest in it, don't you? Are we interested in the salvation of our soul? Or is it just a religious game? Is it just something we do on a Sunday that's good, clean fun? What might you meet with in your boat? Well, if you're on the Titanic 
revisited or the love boat or some piano, you will meet with things like booze or maybe a, a TAB on the boat, have a bit of a flutter. You might meet with a lotto. You might have opportunity to win the lotto. You might meet with AIDS. As you travel on the boats of the world, you might meet with immorality or drugs or gambling. You may meet with the best of food. You may meet with flattery. And this flattery destroys. But what are you going to meet with on the gospel ship? The scriptures tell us clearly. Trouble. Narrow is the way. Difficult to go and thereby that leadeth to life. You're going to meet with trouble on the gospel ship. You're going to meet with hatred. You're going to meet with rejection. You're going to meet with exclusion. You're going to meet with pain, heartache, even death. But blessed are they who die in the Christ. Amen. We looked at that recently in Revelation 14, 9 to 13. Blessed are they who die in the Christ. Everyone's on a boat. And whether we like it or not or understand it or not, we're on a road, we're on that way to hell or heaven right now. Right now. Only you and the Lord know what boat you're on. And I, I'm not just preaching this message here. This message covers m much ground all over the world for whoever may listen. It's always good to be reminded of the boat you're on. Get in the boat, Noah. I have seen. Look, the Lord's not going to help us and save us if he looks and sees that we're not walking righteously. Let's read the scriptures. Psalm 34. Let's see what the word of God says. Psalm 34. We know the Lord and we're not walking in the light. How can we be saved? This is my favourite psalm, Psalm 34. Verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their crying. Brother Clifford, they're open to our cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them, delivers them out of all their troubles. You're listening today. I have seen that you are righteous, Noah. Let's go to Second Chronicles 16. Second Chronicles, chapter 16. Chronicles is just after Kings. 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who, whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly, therefore from now on you shall have wars. And the Jews weren't faithful, were they? 
The Jews weren't loyal to Jesus. They rejected him. They defamed him. Regardless to all their Hebrew language and Arabic. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro across the earth. That he may show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is what? Faithful. No, more than faithful. Loyal. Loyal. Whose heart is loyal. We're going to meet, we're going to meet with all kinds of trouble. The scriptures tell us clearly, don't they? That through many tribulations we shall enter the kingdom of God. Huh? Through many tribulations. Two Timothy chapter three verse twelve. What does it say? Two Timothy chapter three verse twelve. Yes, and all who desire to live as God wants them to live in Christ, they will suffer persecution. It's no love boat. It's it's no Titanic. You know, the Titanic was an absolutely beautiful, magnificent boat. Tremendous. But it sank. What is the Lord telling us? They said it would never sink. They've said of businesses in the world, oh, this business, I... Uh, they say to the customer, we don't need customers like you. We'll never fail. We've been around for 50 years, 60 years. We're 23rd generation hamburger shop. We'll never fail. Look, God Almighty can bring McDonald's to the doll queue. If he wants to. He had King Nebuchadnezzar eating grass like a cow. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 14. Every one of us are on a boat heading somewhere. Are we on the gospel ship? Are we in the gospel ship? Hey? Acts 14 verse 21 And when they had preached the gospel to that city and made many disciples they returned to Lystra, Iconium, Antioch. Verse 22 Acts 14 Strengthening the souls of the disciples exhorting them to continue in the faith. And this is what they said to them we must through many tribulations and trouble enter the kingdom of God. That's the gospel ship. That's no hairy, fairy, Hollywood gospel. That's how they encouraged the people, the new converts. That's how they made them strong, strengthened the souls of the disciples, strengthening them. That's what I'm doing here today. Strengthening the souls. Strengthening your mind, will and emotions. Telling you by the power of the Holy Ghost, stand strong, stand fast in the gospel of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Stand fast in it that you may. Enter the kingdom. Because many are getting weary 
in their souls because they've taken their eyes off the author and the finisher and their eyes are on something and someone else. But our eyes are on the Lord and his eyes are on us and he knows if we're walking in the righteous way. Oh no, it doesn't matter. I said a prayer and I've been under the water and I've got a Bible. King James. I've got the King James Version, 1611. Not that I obey anything in it, but I've got the King James, 1611. I know people with the good news and they obey it. But you can have the King James leather bound and you'll be hell bound with the leather bound. 1611, King James. Do you have the King James translation? Ah! No! I have the Holy Ghost translator! And he strengthened the disciples telling them the truth. That the gospel ship, telling them the truth, that the gospel ship, there will be heartache, there will be trouble, there will be hatred, there will be pain and exclusion. Matthew 10. Can we go there please? The truth sets us free from illusion and delusion. Self, sin, Satan, the rot to come and hell for. Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as a snake and harmless as a pigeon. Harmless as a dove, someone say amen. amen. Hey? Come on now. I send you out, not onto a P&O. I don't send you out into La La Land. I send you out as sheep among wolves. This week, the week we just came through, for me and my household, you would not believe the things that were thrown at us. You would not believe it, one after the other. <laughs> but we stand strong today because we're in the gospel ship. We've been rescued. We've been redeemed from thinking that anything of this world is anything. We do not look at what we see, but we look at what we do not see. We do not trust in what we see, but we trust in what we don't see. For what you see is perishing before your eyes and falling apart. Whereas those who are on the love boat and the lust boat and the Titanic and those who are on the P&O, they all think that that's just going to keep going on and they're going to die gracefully and maybe be annihilated or come back as a camel or something like that. Job chapter 34. We just read Psalm 34. Now we're going to Job 34. Hallelujah. Hey? Job is just before Psalm. Job 34. Let's choose the fear of the Lord. Job 34, verse 21. For Yahweh's eyes are on the ways of man and woman and he sees all his steps. We have to live in that mode. That Yahweh's eyes go to and fro across the earth. His eyes are on us as his eyes were on Noah. And he's seen that he was righteous. 
And he said, come on in now. And the Lord gave him witness what he was going to do. And the Lord gives us witness to go out. And the urgency is great now to go out. The urgency is that we make sure there's no leaven in the lump. We make sure there's no leaven in our lives. We make sure that everything is right with the Lord. Now, we don't know if we have tomorrow. Yesterday's gone. Forget it. Tomorrow may never be ours. Let it be today that we go forward with the message this week and ask the people, what boat are you on? What ship are you on? What are you esteeming to and aiming at? You save all your life and work all your life to go on a P&O cruise where the dunnies don't work? You're going to save up all your money and, and spend all your time making money so you can spend a million dollars on... Uh, a replica Titanic trip that will probably sink anyway and God may even just slam dunk it again and it's got written on the rudder made in China. Come on. We are not so cheap. We are not that cheap. We lay our lives down. For the Lord, we lay our lives down for Jesus. The way we do that is we walk in the doctrine of the Christ. We are born again. We are new creatures. We are not of this world. Someone say amen. amen. We are of God. Let's turn to 1 John. 1 John. The first epistle of John. Chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Hey? 1 John 1, 9. I seen that you were righteous. When God looked down and seen Noah, he said, I seen you and I seen you walk righteously. What's God going to see? Is he going to see that we walk righteously? Is he going to see that we, we may have had sin there but we repented of and he's cleansed us and now we're in right standing again with God? I will cleanse you from all unrighteousness how can you say? Once saved, always saved. How can we say? Oh, but once saved, always saved. I'm covered in the blood. Hey? I'm covered in the blood. I'm washed in the blood. It doesn't matter what, if I sin or what I do. This doesn't matter. I don't have to obey the Lord. You're working your way to heaven if you do that. No, you're not. If we confess our sins, he is faithful just to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then he looks down and he says, Come. That day will come like a thief in the night. He will come at a time nobody knows. He will say, Come. Or will he say, don't come? <laughs> Stay there. I don't know you. I don't want to know you. But we cast out demons. Come on, please. Take me up on the cloud. And all hell will be breaking loose around them. Are we going to take a trip on the gospel ship? Are we going to jump on? Are we going to stay there? Are we going to relish in the Lord? Are we going to do what he says? Are we going to carry that message with us because that's our message? We're looking for another homeland. We're not happy here. This is not our homeland. I am not in reality Paul Sheehan. 
I have another name. I'm not suckling for all the sin and wickedness of the of the forefathers of my relatives and all the rest of it. That's got nothing to do with me. My dad, as far as I know, he's gone on the other boat. <laughs> But I'm on the gospel ship. And many are enticed by the Titanic replicas made in China. And many are enticed by the P&Os whose dunnies don't work. And many are enticed for the cesspools called the love boat. And they're going to find love there. You just find desperation and desperados. You just find shame and guilt and pain. You just find loss of money and and all kinds of disease. But there is a gospel ship that's full of love and hope that does never disappoint because God's love is poured out into our hearts by the power of the Holy Ghost. What, what boat are we on? There's no room for whinging about anything. We have the love of God poured out into our hearts. The love of God poured out into our hearts. The hope we have brings with it no disappointment. And we have power. We have that grace that we access by faith in him in which we stand. And when we've done everything that we know to do to stand, we just stand and wait to see the glory of our Lord. <laughs> I know what boat I'm on. Hey, I know what boat I'm on. What is the boat like? It's our last question for today. What is the boat like you're on? Is it absolutely beautiful? Is it able to save your soul from hell? It's not even able to save your money. But the boat that the true saints are on the gospel ship, it is invisible. And when my wife was waiting for the boat, her boat to come in, waiting for her ship, I came along. She thought to herself, this don't look like no ship. But I came with that message of the unseen God, the invisible one. And she was rescued from the seas of life, the, the Euroclidons, the cyclones and the mudslides, rescued. The gospel is there to rescue the perishing and she was perishing. And she was falling apart at the scene. Someone say amen. amen. What boat are we on? Let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Verse 24. By faith... Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God and to enjoy the passing pleasures of the Titanic revisited. Made in China on the rudder. Hebrews 11, 26, esteeming the reproach of the Christ greater riches than the treasures that were in Egypt, 
For he looked to the reward. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt and did not fear the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. That's how we endure. We see him who's invisible. As we read the word, as we pray, as we preach and teach, as we proclaim the gospel, we see him who is invisible as seeing him. It's like we see him. Where two or more are gathered in his name, he is in the midst. Moses refused to be called the son of a rich man. He refused it. He chose rather to suffer with the people of God rather than enjoy the passing pleasures of the love boat. You're listening. Come on. Hebrews 11, 26. And he thought and considered all the trouble that comes with the Christ and the gospel ship. He said all that hatred and exclusion and pain and, and rejection and tribulation and even death, it's far greater riches than anything and all that is in Egypt. Hallelujah. Let's go forward this week as a living church and let's proclaim the gospel ship. Let's proclaim the doctrine of the Christ. Let's say to them, come in. Repent and be cleansed and be made righteous. And have the righteousness of, of, of Father through the blood of Jesus that you may be known as righteous in the sight of the living God that you may be born of the seed of Abraham through the immortal seed, Jesus. The living word, someone say amen. amen. Title of our message today, All are on a boat. Is your boat sinking? Can it sink? I tell you, our boat cannot sink. The ark never sank. But it didn't look anything like the Titanic revisited Made in China. The ark didn't look like any P&O cruiser or the Queen Mary. The Queen Elizabeth II coming into the port, stopping all stations, going nowhere. It didn't look like the love boat, did it? But they were saved from the wrath of God. Aye? Eh? They were saved from the wrath of God. Praise his holy name. I thank you today, Lord, that you have given us the invitation, each of us, at various times, our time of visitation came and we answered your call and we came in. You cleansed us first. You accepted us. You forgave us, delivered us. We're new creatures now in a new boat. And we know the boat won't sink. We know there's no disease on board. We know, Lord, we don't have to pay to be sustained without the payout money. Like you do on the, these Pentecostal dinghies and evangelical dinghies, these little red rented rowboats. Not much better than no boat. But we know it's free. We know you paid the price. And we know, Almighty God, that if we do have sin in our lives, we must repent of that, come clean, that we may be cleansed from all unrighteousness by you, Lord. Your blood will cleanse us if we sin. We thank you today, Lord, and we give you glory, Jesus, for the truth 
For you are the truth, the way and the life. And all other ways lead to hell. There is only one way. And you said, Jesus, I am the way. And everybody in the house said, Amen. and everybody in the house said, Amen. Amen.